Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And this will be the book that I'll be sharing from, Gurus for Hire, Enlightenment for Sale, an insider's guide into the relationship between spiritual teachers, students and Dharma centers. By His Eminence, the 25th, Sam Toko Rinpoche. And today I'll be reading from page 169, Center Bashing. And before that, I will go to a picture to show, to share with you. And this is a picture of Kachara Forest Retreat and my guru standing on Manjusri Hill looking down. Okay, page 169, Center Bashing. The Phenomenon of Center Bashing. Sometimes when one center is doing good things, such as attracting many people and students and having lots of activities and events, students from another center can feel jealous, threatened and uncomfortable, and they will center bash. They will try to increase the number of their centers and membership at the cost of another center's membership, and they do not care about the consequences. They will go to other centers and say they are practicing bad things, their guru is evil, a fake, and has no basis. They will say all kinds of nasty things at the expense of one center. They do not realize that they are creating extreme disharmony. It is very bad, but it, there is a trend of centers doing that. Increasing membership in one center at the expense of another center is the biggest problem suffered by centers in the world now. It is dangerous and it is very detrimental. It is self-destructive. I've seen in both the West and in the East centers that criticize other centers, their ceremonies, their rituals, and their traditions. They even dare criticize the gurus. For example, a group of people may be doing something for a particular center. Instead of rejoicing for those people and their center, another center immediately targets them and says, hey, come to our center, we have so and so. We have this and that. We are doing this and this. They never encourage people towards their own centers or towards their own gurus. Some centers are sometimes economically forced or pressured to do that. They want to impress their gurus or their members and students, or they are losing students and they want to keep them. Guru, uh, sorry, centers are in competition to get members. They need to pay their bills or they need to prove their lineage is good. Some people in these centers have very small identity crisis or an, an inferiority complex. If fewer people practice what they practice, they feel they may be on the wrong path because they do not have the confidence in themselves. They need to make the group bigger, advertise and talk more to prove that they are on the right path. Numbers means authenticity authenticity to them. They have many, many sociological pressures to make them do things like this. They do not want to, but they are forced to because they do not know enough Dharma or they do not practice enough Dharma to control themselves. Fanatical Buddhism, when they put everybody down and increase their center at the expense of another center, is very bad. Get your own members Go stand on the street, talk to everybody and pass out you, wanted, you want to be saved flyers. Why do you want to put effort into nurturing new students? Why is that that another centre nurtures them, takes care of them, teaches them everything and you just snatch them away by saying something evil? Some people then join those centres out of fear, through lies, coercions and manipulation or through the center's members' negative motivation to defame their practice, their guru and their lineage. The damage. It is a heinous crime for one center to put another center down in order to get membership. Center should never criticize another center, even if we think that that center is not good at all. Societies, organizations and all this should not be set up to judge gurus centers, students, and practices. No one has that authority. Within the tradition of Tibetan Buddhism, 
one head of a religious school has no authority over another. His Holiness Ganden Tri Rinpoche has no say over the other three schools of Buddhism. The other three schools of Buddhism have no say over each other. If, that, sorry, if these great enlightened beings have no say over the other schools, how can anybody anywhere else, anywhere in the world, have any say over any lineage or any practice? How can lay people who have, no, if, who have not studied and practiced have that authority to say anything about the Sangha practices or lineages that have been existent for hundreds and thousands of years? They are not even learned monks or Sangha, and yet they want to control and protect when it is actually a guise to be politically correct to get members. A head of state disparaged another head of state is very bad. That is not decorum or good manners. That is not diplomatic and that is not the way to win people over. If one head of state criticizes another is bad. One spiritual teacher criticizing another is also very bad. It will look like jealousy and competition. If the spiritual teacher has jealousy and is competitive, is that being spiritual? If they have fanatical, crazy students running around carrying out this unspiritual attitude, it will not make the Dharma grow. One should never ever criticize another center, another guru, another lineage or another tradition. The minute another so-called Dharma student tells us that that lineage or that guru is bad, that we went to the wrong place or that we are doing the wrong practices, we should regard them as very dangerous people. Let's say hypothetically that our guru is bad, but the person who tells us our guru is bad actually destroys his own or our spiritual evolution. I'm sorry to say that any Dharma center that who would stoop to such low levels to criticize another person's guru, lineage and practice to get members will not gain any attainment from their practice. There will be no attainments unless there is something contradictory in the Buddha's teachings. These people might go to another center to get people for their center, but once they destroy one person's faith, confidence and loyalty, what kind of a person does that turn out to be? Even if they manage to convince people to join them, do they even want these people, this kind of people, who are so light-eared in their centre? Anybody who would resort to that level of saying negative things to bring us to their centre will destroy us and make us look stupid. They destroy themselves and they are a bad representation of the Buddha, Dharma, their guru and their lineage. It reflects on the person and sometimes without wanting to, it also reflects their guru. Do you, we want to reflect our guru that way? By putting down other people, their lineage, their practice and what they are doing. When we make people lose faith in the guru and they have taken refuge, that they have taken refuge with or who they believe in, it is equivalent to sending them and ourselves to hell. Isn't guru devotion the top of the list? Guru devotion is not criticizing another center so that they come to our center and our center grows. That is guru destruction because that is what the face we show other people. We show others that that is what our guru has taught us. Our gurus did not teach us that and we have re misinterpreted his teachings if we do those things. If the guru is genuine, he will never teach his students to disparage another center, lineage or teacher. We are supposed to be nice to spirits and to generate compassion to hungry ghosts. If we generate compassion to hungry ghosts, but we are mean to people, isn't there a contradiction? There are enough outer enemies we make inner enemies by our ignorance, greed, desires and passions. 
That is why people steal members from another centre to their own centres. But is that how Buddhists act? act? Is that how people who have taken refuge act? To disparage another centre, to put another guru, put down another guru, another practice and another lineage due to rumours, hearsay, personal likes and dislikes. How to handle it? If someone is saying things to us about our centre or our guru, we need to check their motivation. Do they help our centre? Do they donate to our centre? Do they become close and try to share in our activities? Do we celebrate together? Do we combine prayers? Do we share? If they do that and then advise us, there may be a chance that their motivation is good. But if they know nothing about our centre, do not contribute or get involved in the activities, yet start to criticise our practice, lineage and guru, they definitely have an ulterior motive. If anybody says to us, your Dharma centre is no good, your Dharma centre is not valid, your guru is not good, we should run away immediately. We should not even talk. We should not even try unless we are advanced in Dharma and we can debate. If we cannot, their talk will influence our minds. We should stop criticising and not increase it or listen to it. If we are in a position where we are able to convince them and not to have them convince us, then we can begin to talk. If we know we cannot talk, then we should not listen. Do not stoop to their level and do not encourage them to do what they are doing. The minute someone tells us that our guru is bad and our lineage is bad and we listen to the rumours, then firstly we are flippant. Very like ear, silly person who, does not, who is not able to use logic or does, who does not have any logic. And secondly, those people who said that to us are not nice people and not spiritual aspirants. Spiritual aspirants do not talk like that. If we can listen to rumours about our guru, have doubts and run away at the drop of a hat, we will do that everywhere we go, with everything all the time. It also shows us clearly that our spiritual endeavour was not really a spiritual endeavour. It was more like going to a movie and seeing what it is about and or trying a new restaurant. We are definitely not spiritual if we can give up things at the drop of a hat like that. What we should say to people from other centres is something like, you've started studying Dharma. I rejoice. Is there any books or anything you need? Let me know. What guru are you studying with? You are studying with X Rinpoche? I rejoice. I'm so happy. Please go to your centre. Please be loyal. Please follow your guru and practice Dharma. Do retreats, you get a lot of benefit. When we talk to other people like that, we will respect their centre. We will respect their students. We will respect their guru. We will request sorry, we will respect their lineage. That is why we are that is what we are supposed to do to say. If these people really cared about other students from other centres, their centres practice and well being, they should say. If your centre needs help, statues or books, we will help to sponsor you. If they really care about other students and their centres, and it was not for the other motives, they will help the centres. They might question why they should help a centre that is doing something wrong. But how do you know they are doing something wrong? What right does one guru have to say another guru is wrong? Can ordinary people judge and tell? Wouldn't it be better to respect all gurus? Let me make one logical point. In big cities anywhere in the world, we do not need to steal and kidnap Dharma students from another Dharma center. The more centers there are in, one, in any one place in the world, the better it will be because there are plenty of people to go around. Malaysia, for example, has 27 million people. Kuala Lumpur has about 1.5 million people. If we have about 10 Dharma centres, each one would take about 150,000 people. 
So we take 100, 150,000 people into our centre, make them sit on the floor, on the roof or something. Sorry. Make them sit on the roof or outside on the car park. Set up tents outside and put speakers up all over the place. 150,000 people are more than enough. Why should we have everybody else share? Let everybody go around. Why should everybody be attracted to just one centre? Some people may walk into a centre and not like it because it is not their lineage or their practice. Some people may have followed the tr same tradition in their previous lives, so they have greater affinity. Others might not have that affinity. Either way is okay. We should not be offended if other people do not like our guru or our centre. Everybody has his own affinity. What's the big deal? There is no big deal at all. When I went to India and Nepal, I used to go to many centres that belonged to different gurus because I took initiations and practices from those gurus. I went, but I did not talk about this and that at all. I just went there and quietly followed what they did there. It was not because I was restricted or scared. There was simply nothing to talk about. A real spiritual teacher or one aspiring to be one will not criticize another spiritual teacher and will not put another Dharma center down. If we hear a person putting our center or any center down, we should immediately advise them. Please show a good reflection of your teacher. Don't do that. In my Dharma Center, I disparage people who criticize other lineages, gurus and centers. I stop them immediately. I cut down and stamp down on sectarianism. I have never at one any time taught any of my friends or students anything about politics. I've never ever told anyone in our center or in any place to take sides or to criticize another side. I've always critically and openly given my students both sides of the coin, explained things to them and let them decide for themselves. I ran away and I slept on the streets for Dharma. I would not at this age and level sink myself to this low level of playing politics for Dharma, the thing that I treasure and love the most. If I could give up everything in the United States, my worldly dreams and aspirations, because of my promise to my guru, His Holiness Zong Rinpoche, I would surely not give up on my promise to him to practice and to keep my spiritual commitments. That is what I expect of my spiritual friends and students, to be loyal to their guru and the practices he has given them, not to criticize others, to be non-political, just practice. That is what I expect from my people. If they do not follow that, I come down very harshly. If people hear things and they have so much doubt and they still do not believe me after I talk to them, I just tell them to go. If they are like that now, they are going to be like that all the time. They are just a disruption to themselves and the people around them. I do not care if they are rich or poor or if we depend on them. I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm saying we should be straightforward and we have to have principles. There are some things we have to stand up for, which is our spiritual enlightenment. The important thing is that whatever centre we are at, we should put our energy into that centre to make it grow, not dispel or disperse the energy. Our allegiance should be to our Guru, who is teaching us the Dharma, to the Dharma, to the centre, to the Dharma, the centre, and to the Dharma students and staff working in the center. I'm not trying to start some kind of warfare here. That is the truth. If someone says something about our parents, whether it's right or wrong, our allegiance is to our parents because they are kind to us. Similarly, our allegiance should be to the people who run the center, who give time, energy, resources, help, work, effort to the center for many years. Without them, there would be no center. And with that, I end the session here. It's quite a long chapter. And thank you for sharing your time with me.
and I'll end this with a completion dedication in Tibetan. Jang Jeb Seng Chong Ren Po Shi Ma Ke Pa Nam Ge Yu Shi Ke Pa Nam Pa Me Pa Yang Go Ne Go Ne Pe Wa Shu To Ni Chong Ren Po Shi Ma Ke Pa Nam Ge Yu Shi Ke Pa Nam Pa Me Pa Yang Go Ne Go Ne Pe Wa Shu Da So Ju Ni Sa Pa Ge Wa Di Dan Dan Dro Wa Go Na Ka Pa Dang Je Pa Je Su No San Tra Pa Yi Tam Ping Yi Po Rin Du Sa Se Shu Ke Wa Kun Tung Yen Da La Ma Da Dra Mi Cho Ki Pa La Lo Jo Jing Sa Dam Na Ngi Yo Te Ra So Ne Do Je Chang Yi Ngo Pa Lo Tu Su Ge wa di yu du da la ma sang gyo dru yu ne Dru wa chi ke ma lu pa de yi sa la go pa shu Cho ki ka pu sung ka pa Cho su nam pa pe wa la Ge ki sa ma si wa da Tung ki ma lu sa wa shu Da da sung yu du sun da Dru wa sung yi la te ni Ge wa lo san tra pa yi Tam pa yu ri ba gyu shi Ni mo de le sen de le Ni mi gu nyan de le shi Ni sin ta tu de le pa Ko chu sung yi jing gyi lo Ko chu sung yi ngot ru so Ko chu sung yi tra si shu Jesu Lama Kusen Rab Ting Ching Nam Ka Tri Ni Cho Cho Ke Pa Dang Lo Sam Ten Pe Tro Me Sam Sung Ni Tro Yi Mun Sa Ta Tu Ni Gyu Shi Gang Ri Rao Wei Ko Wei Shin Kam Den Pen Dan Deo Wa Ma Lu Gyo Wei Ni Chen Ren Se Wan Ten Sing Gat So Yi Sha Pe Shi De Ba Du Ten Gyu Shi Hom Tong Pe Ngo Tro Ma Lo Pa Den Den Da La Sao Du So Ko Dan Den Pa Long Chok Nam Ke Pa Su Shik Shuk Ten Sao Thank you for joining me and I do hope that you sh share some time with me for my next session. See you.